Now I'm going to take apart this head, which was never meant to be taken apart. Um, and we'll look at what's inside. This is a video about this historic uh, curiosity antique vintage item, a Coates uh, M76 micro precision wheel balancing system. That is what um, they called it in their manual. Um, it's a precise scale that finds the light and heavy side um, of a wheel that was popular, I believe in the 1960s and into the 1970s. Obviously not a way to uh, balance a modern uh, car wheel. So um, there's quite a bit of interest in, this, in these items. They're selling for $480 on eBay uh, right now in 2024. I don't know if people are really trying to balance wheels on them or they're just used as a um, decoration in classic car garages. Um, this video is about the cap and the uh, cap internals uh, specifically with respect to scale. So the most common issue and most common question about, uh, about this cap is uh, whether it can be refilled with the fluid that's in there uh, to make the bubble smaller. So as the cap loses fluid either leaks out or evaporates somehow, uh, the bubble will become too large uh, to indicate the scale deflection and the uh, balancer will become unusable. Uh, there's interest in trying to add additional fluid in there. Unfortunately, that's impossible. The cap, and I will, sh I will unscrew the cap. It unscrews just like this and coats in the parts manual uh, considers this a single part, so there are no uh, separate parts. Uh, I'm going to take it apart later in this video, but um, this cap is assembled from above with respect to the uh, fluid and the bubble, and it's assembled from below uh, with respect to the scale mechanism. In between there is steel, so you can't get through from below to um, refill, uh, your only option is to buy one of those stick-on uh, stick uh, bubble levels which are easily available uh, in approximately this diameter and glue it on top here and it will work. The wheel on the coach bubble balancer and it's a little bit out of balance and uh, actually this is a dynamically balanced wheel on a good computerized machine. Uh, at a Subaru dealer. Uh, but it is showing out of balance here and this is the side that needs weight and it dropped it and it shows that it needs a lot of weight. Here I'll steady it. Now it's almost in the center. It needs to be a little bit this way. Um, but you get the idea. This is 84 grams. Um, that I had to put on uh, on this wheel. 84 grams to get the bubble to the center and this is actually an already balanced wheel so the manual for this product uh, which is um, surprisingly complicated um, refers to this device as a sensitive scale uh, but I'm actually not completely sure that this is a very sensitive scale. Um, and um, I am planning to do some work to this head. If you'd like to read about the Coates M76 balancer, I recommend uh, this website, autorestorer.com. It had an article about this about 10 years ago uh, with some good pictures. Um, this mostly dealt with the... Um, bubble uh, leakage issue uh, but you'll be able to see inside the cap just like on this video although I will show uh, all the parts here uh, shortly. 
If you look at the underside of the cap, you'll see that there's a washer with a serial number stamped on it and it's held in and behind it the whole mechanism is uh, held in by these uh, pinched marks. Uh, there's four of them around the circumference that were made by some kind of press and this is how this was uh, permanently assembled. So we'd need to um, cut those pinch marks to uh, pull the mechanism out. All right, we're at the lathe, the cap of the bubble balancer of the coats, um, bubble wheel balancing machine is here. I'm holding it with these copper um, shims to uh, protect it. This boring bar that I'm pointing at is a high-speed steel boring bar that's small enough, it's skinny enough to fit into this space. And um, I'm just gonna reach in there and machine away um, this very small uh, thickness uh, that's been uh, pinched and distorted that holds uh, the washer. <laughs> That's it. Sorry I can't show you into this bore. Okay, so after I machined off the pinch marks or the pinch distortions that were made in there to hold this washer in, I tried to pull this pin, which I suspect is somehow mushroom shaped or it has some kind of a hardware on the end that makes it mushroom shaped. I tried to pull it out just with my fingers and I can't. So I'm gonna uh, clamp the pin in a vise. And these are rubber jaws, soft jaws. I don't want to damage the pin. And now I'm gonna pull. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, there's a ball in there. Like a ball bearing ball. But everything else is as expected. There is a step, the washer fits inside the step. Uh, there's actually a stack of washers, metal, plastic, and another metal. So there are three washers, and uh, it's not mushroom shaped. It's not mushroom shaped. It um, uh, it has this snap ring on it. Uh, but inside there is a. I think it's a ball bearing ball that's pressed into a depression. It's not coming. All right, this is a magnet. I've learned how to extract that bolt from there. You need a magnet for that. All right, so here's a situation from inside here. Uh, there is a ball bearing bolt, which I suspect is a quarter inch imperial size. And this thing has three washers. Um, there's also considerable oil here. I think it's from oil splash from the damping oil uh, from the balancer but um, there's a thicker washer and that's the one that the thing was pinched against and you can see I slightly scratched it with my boring bar um, and this is where the pinch marks were uh, then there's a plastic one in the middle then there's a metal one and then the pin is just a pin uh, but it has, um, what I'm trying to remember is this, uh, the proper name for this may be a circlip, but I'm not totally sure. Uh, so there's a groove for this, I'll call it circlip for now, uh, machined into the pin. And then this, I imagine, is supposed to be a precision flat surface. Uh, and so the question is, how flat is this surface? and how spherical is uh, the bowl in there? These are the questions. So perhaps my coats is an inaccurate scale uh, because there's divot in here, lack of flatness. Or perhaps my coats is an inadequate scale because over the last you know, of the decades that this thing was presumably in use, uh, the bowl uh, is no longer round and it's some kind of egg shape that wants to roll to one side more than another. Uh, um, 
it'd be nice to lap this flat. Somebody who has equipment and knowledge and skill uh, to lap micrometer anvils. This would be perfect for them. It's kind of like the same size. Uh, I don't have much lapping equipment and I certainly don't have a tiny little flat lap. Uh, I might try the precision flat stones, the PFG stones from the YouTuber Spencer Webb. These are the precision ground uh, flat stones um, sold by a YouTuber podcaster and uh, interesting dude named uh, Spencer Webb. Uh, highly recommend his uh, podcast. It's fun. Um, this is the flattest thing I have. It's also an abrasive surface. So these are Norton stones that you can buy on, uh, on Amazon to uh, sharpen your axe and your pocket knife uh, that were put on um, a surface grinder by a precision machinist and ground with a diamond wheel. And so that's why it's the flattest um, thing I have. And they haven't seen a heavy use. I've done a couple of things on them, but, but relatively little, very little. Um, you are supposed to condition them on each other, kind of like uh, uh, making a lap using a three lap, three uh, plate method, except that there's only two of them. So there I conditioned it. Uh, this this pink side is the finer side, the gray one is the more coarse. Um, so I'm gonna just try to um, remove the sharpie mark uh, and see what I get. And uh, so of course the obvious worry here, obvious concern is that there's a divot in the center that's uh, egg-shaped or even a symmetric, well, I'm not sure what a symmetric divot will do. This has to roll, this has to move on it. So I guess if it was perfectly symmetric, it would work, but of course it wouldn't, nothing is perfect. So definitely not a lapping operation, but I guess it's a legitimate stoning operation, the way they stone things after they scrape them, for example. So let's try something like that. Um, okay, the Sharpie is dry. Mm, I think it's quite flat. I've been using this micrometer here to inspect these ball bearing bowls. And when I use the word inspect, I of course use it in air quotes, but I'm still blown away. Um, I cannot measure any inconsistency. I'm always getting this number. All right, so I cut away the pinch marks in there that hold uh, that stack of washers and, and this thing with its circlip. So when I put them back in with a new ball bearing ball and my um, sort of kind of like lapped uh, pin, um, how am I going to retain them? Well, the internal diameter of this bore is an imperial size of one and five sixteenths of an inch. Uh, that's this bore on this, I believe it's with working on the Coates uh, 76 uh, model wheel balancer and a um, one and five sixteenths inch internal um, retaining ring, this one is stainless, is available on MacMaster car. So I need a groove for this ring. So this is a um, high speed steel, homemade, home ground, um, internal um, grooving tool and I only need a shallow groove uh, so the ring doesn't fall out. So this should be a pretty easy lathe operation because the groove will be right against the step. So I'll just move in this bar until I hit the step and then uh, pull it out a little, cut me a shallow groove. 
uh, that will retain that ring. Alright, so I'm ready to reassemble the, the head of the coach balancer with my new snap ring. So I gotta get the circlip onto the this pin that I flattened the best I could. Okay, circlip's on. Uh, the brand new quarter inch ball bearing ball, which I measured to be impressively and remarkably round is next so that dropped just right in and I think yeah it's whole held in there by magnetic forces I think magnetism is a <laughs> plays a role in all this so next is the pin and then over the pin is the thinner washer looking it's got it's got a line on it so I think it must have gone this way Alright, so that's the thinner washer, then the plastic washer. Um, uh, then the thicker washer with a serial number out, what this, this number points out, and it fits in the groove there. Yep. And that's how it was before with just a few pinch marks. There was a pinch here and a pinch here and then there were three of them around it holding this inside. And so now uh, the clip and the groove uh, to hold the washer in. Yeah, so it's in. There is the circular clip. Um, the serial number is still readable. The clip is in the groove. This is not going to fall out. Um, so restored with a new ball bearing ball. Whether that makes any difference is of course highly questionable. Well, I really enjoyed uh, taking apart the coats and uh, seeing how it works, reading the manual and um, taking apart the head and uh, replacing the ball bearing ball, trying to flatten and uh, almost lap uh, the top of the pin. But in the end, it did not make it a, a better scale. Uh, it still required a lot of weight uh, to change deflection. And it's a static balancer anyway. It can't do um, dynamic balancing for modern high offset wheels. And um, after looking around, I ended up with this. So if you are interested in this import low-cost uh, portable and 12 volt DC powered um, small uh, wheel balancing machine, uh, consider subscribing to this channel. My next video is going to be about uh, my experience with uh, this machine. As always, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.